Anna. Ga je vinden voor je. Nou, ik heb het niet. Ik moet. Oké. Right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this conversation about is education ready for AI? My name is Mina Larabi. I'm the editor of The National and a young global leader, and I'm delighted to be leading this conversation. We're just getting used to our setting. It's not a usual setting for um, a session discussion at the World Economic Forum, um, but it's wonderful to be here, um, here in Riyadh. So, we have 45 minutes to tackle a really important topic, education, always important, but of course the trend of AI. So of course AI is already transforming our world and more to come. Um, our speakers will be talking about much of what we are thinking when it comes to the transformation of education, the opportunities, but also the challenges. Um, three key areas to tackle is the global teacher gap, it is an issue that many people in education systems are concerned about. Um, UNESCO says 44 million additional teachers will be needed by 2030. Now, what seems to be the, the current uh, agreement amongst all sides is you don't want to replace teachers, you want to enable teachers, you want to empower teachers. Second is this idea of administrative tasks that can be at least condensed by the use of AI, OECD lower, secondary, lower school secondary teachers have said that 44% of their time is actually put to teaching and everything else is admin and other tasks and assessment. So AI can also be seen an opportunity there. And then there's the digital skills gap, um, a big challenge in different communities across the world. And I don't think anybody has figured it out. Different um, countries and uh, industries are tackling it. So how can teaching with and about AI change that? Um, Today, the World Economic Forum is publishing a report called Shaping the Future of Learning, the Role of AI in Education 4.0. So I highly recommend that you, uh, that you get a copy of that. And it sheds a light on many of these issues. Um, to take on this conversation, we have at the very end of the table, um, Laura Fregetti, who is CEO of the Global Partnership for Education. Um, next to her is Minister of Education from Rwanda, Gaspar Twagir Izu. Um, and then we have Jack Azaguri, who is the Group Chief Executive of Strategy and Consulting for um, Accenture. And then Dima al Secretary General for Digital Cooperation Organization. And right near me here is Rudaina Abdu, Founder and CEO of Zeki. Um, so, Minister Gaspard, if I can please start with you. How do you see the transformation of education with AI's development? And if you can give us some of the examples of how you see that in Rwanda at the moment, it would be great. Thank you very much, and uh, this is a very important conversation uh, that we are having. Uh, and um, if you look at all the conversations that are happening here, most of them are focusing on AI and how do you improve uh, productivity with AI. Uh, and you can see that uh, AI has potential to increase productivity across uh, all the sectors, uh, and education, of course, should not be left uh, behind. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, if um, AI is not uh, properly streamlined uh, in education, these productivity gains may not happen in all uh, the other sectors. Uh, because, of course, uh, the education sector is in charge of producing the skills, uh, and if those skills, if the students or uh, the products of education are not properly uh, trained and are not, uh, did not take a uh, good opportunity of uh, um, uh, AI, uh, then these problems will keep coming back into be a circular uh, issue. So uh, education, uh, the question on, around this panel, is education ready for AI? Uh, the short answer is yes, uh, but the long discussion will be on how. So uh, what we have been uh, seeing as uh, some of these potential um, examples of how AI could revolutionize education, and you kind of mentioned uh, about it, on this uh, shortage uh, of teachers. Of course, AI and technology are not going to replace teachers, but again, as you said, we can make sure that teachers are properly educated. Here we are trying to talk about uh, how AI can help uh, in uh, producing uh, 
education materials for the teachers or training materials for the teachers so that uh, we do not have all these expensive training uh, sessions uh, that we all have to go, uh, to go through. So teachers can be enabled to learn on their own uh, using AI, and AI can facilitate that. Uh, and of course, AI is not going to replace teachers, but we can augment mm. their practice uh, in, uh, in the classrooms. So you talked about how we can um, eliminate these repetitive tasks that the teachers have to go through, uh, whether it's through grading, whether it's through uh, managing the classrooms. So we see also uh, a huge uh, potential of AI uh, around, around that. Uh, and of course, we also uh, see opportunities around personalized learning. Uh, so this is something that has been talked uh, about for a while. Uh, so, uh, but we also think that AI also has potential to uh, assess uh, the ability of uh, individual students and then be able to customize content that the students can uh, learn that way. And another big opportunity that we see uh, on AI, of course, is around um, uh, uh, equity so and how, how how is that so you will see that um, uh, there is a big gap between uh, the students achievements whether they are in rural or urban areas uh, and uh, but if you think about technology if you think about access to content uh, technology has the potential to provide the same content to all the students whether they are uh, in the cities or in the rural areas so technology and ai in general has also the potential to be a great equalizer uh, in that sense so we think uh, this is also something that we can uh, capitalize on so uh, and uh, of course uh, this cannot happen uh, if uh, education systems or the education leaders do not think differently. So uh, AI, uh, therefore, is not something to fight uh, in education. It's something to embrace. Uh, but how we embrace it is going to make uh, a lot uh, of a difference. So you're at the helm of an education system in uh, Rwanda. I mean, how do you, how do you see that, the ability to embrace uh, AI at the moment in your country? So in Rwanda, uh, what we have, uh, uh, the efforts uh, of uh, our education system uh, uh, are part uh, of the overall uh, plan for the government of Rwanda to embrace technology and make technology an enabler of our transformation. So we started uh, many years ago by putting in place uh, conducive policies for uh, technology. Uh, and then we started building infrastructure around, around the country and now uh, internet coverage uh, is almost the entire country. Uh, and uh, if you look at how internet penetration in schools has been, we uh, are now uh, almost at, a, uh, at a, where we are connecting all the schools. So we have now a very big project uh, on uh, building a dedicated network for all the schools uh, and the research networks around the country. So and this is to ensure that our students have access to information, the teachers have access to information that they can uh, use in the classroom. So this is in uh, preparing our schools uh, to be uh, future ready. So we have also, uh, of course, investing in uh, making sure that our students have uh, the right type of content uh, and we have digitized uh, all the content that we have uh, in our education system and we have been working uh, to make sure that this the delivery of that content is as smart as possible so that our students and teachers can take a very good uh, advantage of that uh, and another thing that we worked on was to digitize the entire system uh, itself so uh, how you recruit teachers we have uh, digitized the whole uh, process from end to end uh, teachers how they are recruited how they are trained and how they are managed how they are also transferred uh, between uh, be, uh, between uh, posts, so we have also digitized um, uh, assessments. So meaning that uh, we are producing a lot of data around assessments. Mm. Our students uh, take what we call comprehensive assessments, and this is an assessment that's uh, nationally benchmarked, uh, so that we can uh, be able to compare how our students are doing. And all of this is uh, this is digitized. So this is to ensure that we have data, uh, and then later on we are now using 
this technology that we are talking about here to now make sure that we get the right insights from, the, from, from those sets of data. Are our students doing better? And if they are doing better, why? And what can we do uh, to make sure that uh, we, keep, uh, we keep improving? So there are um, many examples of what uh, we have been uh, doing to ensure that we build that base. Uh, so, but again, the challenge, uh, it's not only in Rwanda, but also elsewhere, is um, to uh, ensure that we cover all the basics, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, make sure that we are working on these transformational uh, issues. So maybe uh, over the course of this discussion, also hear from uh, what uh, other people think, but this is going to be uh, a challenge that education systems are going to, uh, to be working on. How do we ensure that we cover all these technical issues in education to make sure that kids go to school, mm -hmm. that they go to the right schools, uh, right. that they have the right teachers, the right uh, teaching and learning materials, but also at the same time think about the future of education. And these are not the things that we can do sequentially. So these are the things that uh, we will need to make sure that we do in parallel, uh, but do it responsibly. Thank you very much. Well, you spoke about digital transfer, I mean, you spoke about many important points, but the digital transformation